Hello everyone. Welcome to this new video. So in this video, from from this video onwards, we are going to discuss some important scheduling techniques because uh, th those scheduling techniques are very important uh, from the exam point of view. Any one of the uh, technique would be asked. So for each scheduling technique, I'm going to do one separate video. So in this video, we are discussing with the preemptive scheduling. Okay, so this is one kind of technique. Then in the upcoming two videos, we have a uh, round robin scheduling and priority based scheduling. Okay, so those two we are going to discuss in the upcoming video. So this preemptive or SJF SRT scheduling. So let us discuss this. SJF means shortest job first. Okay, then SRT means shortest remaining time. Okay, so let us uh, see some of the differences now. Preemptive scheduling. It is employed in systems which implements the preemptive multitasking model. Every task in the ready queue, ready queue means the uh, first step of execution where the uh, data is loaded into any process. Okay, so that is called as ready queue. Gets a chance to execute. When and how often each process gets a chance to execute, gets the CPU time, is dependent on the type of preemptive scheduling algorithm. Okay, used for scheduling the processes so we have one particular algorithm to be followed in this preemptive scheduling the scheduler can preempt that is stop temporarily the current executing task and process and select another task for the ready queue for execution so this is the meaning of preempt okay that is stopping temporarily so stopping in between so if you want to require any change in the middle of the program so stop temporarily and add some other data to the process okay so that is called as preemption when to preempt a task and which task is to be picked up from the ready queue for execution after preempting the current task is purely dependent on the scheduling algorithm. Okay, so it is purely dependent on the algorithm which we follow. A task which is preempted by the scheduler is moved to the ready queue. The act of moving a running process task into the ready queue by the scheduler without the process requesting for it is known as preemption. Okay. The time-based preemption and priority-based preemption are the two important approaches uh, adopted in this scheduling. Okay, so this was all about the preemptive scheduling. So now let us discuss with the SJF for SRT scheduling under under this preemptive scheduling. That is the non-preemptive SJF, that is shortest job first scheduling algorithm, sorts the ready queue only after the current process completes the execution or enters the wait state. Okay. So Whereas the preemptive SJF scheduling algorithm sorts the ready queue when the new process enters the ready queue and checks whether the execution time of the new process is shorter than the remaining time. Okay, that is it selects the shortest time. So that's why it is called a shortest job first. Okay, so the shortest time is selected and then it is uh, it comes out of the loop and then it should be scheduled. Okay, so that we are going to see with one uh, important example problem that is how the how this preemptive or SJF scheduling works. Okay. If the execution time of the new process is less, then the currently executing process is preempted and the new process is scheduled for the execution. It always compares the execution completion time, that is the remaining execution time for the new process, of a new process which enters the ready queue with the remaining time for completion of the currently executing process and schedules the process with the shortest remaining time for the execution. Okay, so this uh, this is the algorithm about how this. Uh, uh, SDF scheduling works. So let us uh, come to know of this algorithm with one simple example. Okay. So this is that example, guys. Example one. So they have given here three processes with process IDs. So they have given uh, the process IDs here that is P1, P2, and P3 with estimated completion time. That is for each process ID, they have given the completion time as well. That is in terms of milliseconds, that is 10, 5, 7 respectively enters the ready queue together okay so these three process ids would be entering the ready queue together okay a new process that is p4 with estimated completion time of 2 milliseconds enters the ready queue after the after 2 milliseconds okay so it does not enter together but when these p p1 p2 p3 are entered together after 2 milliseconds after they enter then the uh, next process p4 would be coming inside the ready queue Assume all the process contains only CPU operation and no IO operation. Okay. In this, we should be calculating the, they have told us to calculate the waiting time, average waiting time and the average 
turn around time. Okay, let's so let us see, see them one by one. But before that, let us try to understand this. So they have given at the beginning there are only three processes P1, P2, P3 available in the ready queue. Okay, and the SRT scheduler picks up the process with the shortest remaining time for execution completion for scheduling. Now process P4 with estimated execution completion time 2 milliseconds enters the ready queue after 2 milliseconds of uh, start of execution of the P2. Okay. The process are rescheduled for the execution in the following order. So this order is there. So in order to understand this order, we need to understand the uh, how, how the first shortest path is coming. So see here. So these three process IDs enter together first. That is P1, P2, P3 with the uh, remaining uh, uh, scheduling time, remaining time as 10, 5 seconds, 7 milliseconds respectively. Firstly, at ready queue, we don't have uh, anything in ready queue. That is ready queue is at 0 millisecond. So first you should be picking up the shortest uh, time. That is you see for the second process ID that is P2, we have the shortest time that is 5 milliseconds. So that's why that should be scheduled first. So that's why P2 is scheduled first. So come to the next step. Now you see here, they have given in the question after 2 milliseconds, the next uh, process ID would be coming that is P4. So that night, so that's why now the ready queue would be at 2 milliseconds. So one more uh, P4 that is process ID would be coming that is 2 milliseconds. So since P2 is scheduled, since uh, at first P2 was 5 milliseconds, now the new process ID P4 has entered. So we should be... Uh, it should be uh, taking that five, 2 millisecond from this 5 so that the P2 would be now 3 millisecond. Okay. So now P2 is preempted. That is P2 would be terminated. Now P4 would be scheduled. Because you see here, if you compare the timings 10, 3, 7, 2, P4 has the shortest time. So that's why P4 would be scheduled now. Now ready queue would be. Now add this uh, remaining time. Since P4 is scheduled, so you should be adding that remaining time that is 2 millisecond to the ready queue. So the total ready queue would be now 4 milliseconds. So now the leftover uh, IDs are P1, P2 and P3. That is 10, 3, 7. Okay. In this again now, P4 would be completed because the P4 execution is over since it is gone through the ready queue. Now we have P2 is scheduled. You see here why P2 is scheduled because it has the shortest time. So that's why this P2 would be completed at the next stage. And whatever the time is there, that would be getting added to the ready queue. That is 4 plus 3. Now ready queue would be... 7 milliseconds. So now we are left with only two process IDs P1 and P3 that is 10 and 7 milliseconds. So now in this case now P3 would be scheduled because it has the lowest time. So that's why P3 is scheduled. So now since P3 is scheduled so this is the shortest time so that would be added to the ready queue that is 7 plus 7 is equal to 14. So now ready queue would be 14 milliseconds. So now leftover process ID is P1. So it's obvious that P3 would be completed and this would be scheduled. So totally at for 24 milliseconds, the complete process of all the IDs would be completed. Okay, that is 14 plus 10. So this is the complete thing that they have mentioned here. That is P2, P4, P2, P3, P1. First P2 would be completed from 0 to 2 milliseconds. Then P4 would be completed by checking the shortest time. It is from 2 to 4. Then again P2 since it has the shortest time. So 4 to 7 that is it takes 3 milliseconds. Then we have... P3 would be completed that is from 7 to 14 milliseconds okay the remaining time for this is 7 then P1 would be completed at 10 milliseconds that is 14 plus 10 24 so total time taken to complete is 24 milliseconds okay now how to calculate the waiting time average waiting time and the turnaround time so here see if the waiting time for P2 is given as 0 millisecond plus 4 minus 2 that is if you do the simplification you will be getting it as 2 milliseconds. So how this has come you see here P2 would be starting executing first and it is interrupted by P4 okay after 2 milliseconds since P4 is in uh, is been introduced and it gets interrupted and has to wait till the completion of P4 to get the next next CPU slot okay so that's why first initially it would be P2 then 4 minus 2 milliseconds so that's why the waiting time for P2 would be 2 milliseconds okay it should be waiting for 2 milliseconds next waiting time for p4 p4 is entered uh, after the second execution right so that's why we don't have any waiting time for p4 it will be directly starting executing so that's why it should be 0 0 milliseconds because p4 starts executing 
by preempting P2 since the execution time for completion of P4 that is 2 millisecond is less than that of the remaining time. Okay. So now next is waiting time for P3. Okay. So for waiting time for P3 that is equal to 7 millisecond now. P3 should be waiting for 7 milliseconds. Okay. Because P3 starts executing after completing P4 and P2. Okay. So that's why at 7 milliseconds the uh, waiting time for P3 would be co completed. Next we have waiting time for P1. That is P1 in order to complete uh, this part it should be waiting for 14 milliseconds so that all these three that is P4, P2 and P3 should be getting completed. Till that it should be waiting. So waiting time for P1 would be 14 milliseconds. So average waiting time is simple. That is waiting time for all the processes P1, P2, P3, P4 should be taking the average of it. That is 0 plus 2 plus 7 plus 14 divided by 4. If you do that, you would be getting our average waiting time as 5.75 milliseconds. Okay. Next is turnaround time. Turnaround time for P2, they have given it as 7 milliseconds. Okay. Time spent in ready queue plus the execution time. In order to calculate the turnaround time, so this is the formula that is time spent in ready queue plus execution time. So in this case, P2 has uh, uh, time spent in ready queue for P2 is uh, 2 milliseconds and the execution time is, you see here, P2 has spent 2 milliseconds, okay, and the execution time is 5 milliseconds, right, for P2. So 2 plus 5, if you add it, we would be getting our uh, answer as, for turnaround time as 7 milliseconds. Then we have turnaround time for P4. For P4, it is 2 milliseconds because... P4 at ready queue after before entering the time spent was 0 milliseconds and then P4 has entered so, so 0 plus 2 so the total turnaround time would be 2 milliseconds in case of P4. The next we have turnaround time for P3 that is 14 milliseconds. So how it is 14 you see here. Since uh, in ready queue uh, time spent in ready queue for P3 was 7 milliseconds. Okay. Then we have execution time for p3 is also 7 milliseconds here so these two would be getting added that is 7 plus 7 so that would be 14 milliseconds next for p1 it is 24 milliseconds again you see here time spent at ready queue was 14 milliseconds and the execution time for p1 is 10 milliseconds so 14 plus 10 is 24 okay so this was the turnaround time for all these so add them 7 plus 2 plus 14 plus 24 divided by 4 and take the average the answer we would be getting it around 11.75 milliseconds okay so this was one important example problem i needed to discuss under the preemptive scheduling or sjf scheduling okay so yeah so this was that problem i hope you understood this understood this problem so that's all for the video guys so please uh, do watch the video till the end in order to understand in the next video we are going to discuss with one more scheduling technique that is round robin scheduling okay so we'll see you in the next video like, share, subscribe to the channel and keep supporting. Thank you.